Hey, welcome to today's show of the Pendleton Sportsman. We're gonna come back and play with these rattlesnakes a little bit later, unless I get bit first. <laughs> but uh, hey, we're gonna check out a little turkey hunting and a little skeet shooting today. And then uh, I got a little info for you about the snakes and the reptiles and amphibians here on base. So welcome to today's show. Hope you enjoy it. March 27th was the opening day of turkey season here in California, and I headed out to the Cleveland National Forest to try my luck at a Rio Grande turkey. There's about 460,000 acres that cover a variety of habitats from mountain forests to low-lying deserts in the Cleveland National Forest. Before heading out into a national forest in California, you have to have a National Forest Adventure Pass. Now you could buy one of these at a local sporting goods store or at one of the ranger stations. Just make sure you have one in your windshield when you park on the side of the road. Some areas to look for if you want to try turkey hunting are forested areas next to clearings. Springtime is the breeding season for turkeys and males will come out into these clearings and strut and fluff up to try to attract females. Now this place has a lot more to offer than just turkey hunting. You can hunt deer, quail, doves, and waterfowl. And if hunting doesn't float your boat, you can still come out here and try some hiking or camping or bird watching. Now if you've never hunted on public land, be prepared to hunt with other hunters. But you know what? You never know who's going to get lucky on that day. Got out here late. There were trucks parked. I've never seen so many, so many trucks parked to hunt in the national forest. Uh, got out here late, so I just decided to sit on top of a hill where everybody was parked and uh, started talking to a couple other hunters. And we were hearing turkeys gobble up there while we were talking. There was a, had to be about ten other trucks still parked down here, and. None of us wanted to go out there and try to compete with other hunters, but I tell you what, I kept hearing turkeys gobble. <laughs> so uh threw on all my stuff, hopped out of the truck, you know, reparked, and ran through the woods. I mean, I, every time I'd heard a turkey gobble, I tried to cut, cut off that distance between me and another hunter. Because you can hear the other hunters out here calling. You can hear their, uh, you can hear their turkey calls. And I... Uh, I finally got to where the turkey was, hit my call, and the sucker gobbled. And five minutes later, I hear somebody shoot right there, that, right there where I heard the turkey gobble. So, oh well, I guess it's, uh, it's luck of the draw out here on, on public land. I hit this call one time and see if I can get anything to gobble.
I don't know if you heard that or not, but there's another guy calling about 200 yards away from me, so. Could help, it could hurt. Might convince a turkey that there's a couple, a few other hens around here and bring one in. But a lot of times these turkeys just get tired of hearing, hearing us hunters and they just, uh, they take off and go somewhere else. Or they just stop gobbling and you don't ever know where they're at. So a lot of times you have to just sit and be patient. It's almost like deer hunting. You just sit in one spot for an hour or two, call a little bit here and there, and wait for a turkey to come. That's not as fun, but it's just another method. After calling for a few minutes, I actually had a turkey sneak up on me and surprise me with some gobbles. Now listen closely as the turkey gobbles while I'm calling. This turkey kept trying to give me the slip, so I had to keep repositioning to stay on top of him. Okay, here's the deal. I've been chasing this turkey around, same turkey, for two hours. <laughs> and <laughs> he seems to have gone way over a few more ridges. I was within about uh, 100 yards of him at one point. And I was trying to reposition, and of course I don't know the area too well, because so, I'm a new guy. And uh, I repositioned and was coming up over a finger and he was right on the other side of the ravine. And I heard him fly away. I could barely see him through the trees. So I let him rest, went down the finger, tried to learn my way around a couple places, hit the call again, heard him gobble. <laughs> but he was about, uh, about 500 meters away, 500 yards around there. So I started chasing him again over the next ridge, got up there, hit the call again. And uh, he gobbled again. So I kept going, kept coming over ridges, kept going over ridges. And I tell you what, if nothing else, I got a good workout today. I don't need to PT this weekend because these, uh, these are some pretty steep ravines they got up here. So I, the day's not over. Like I said, you can hunt till 4 o'clock. So maybe we'll get lucky. If not, oh well, that's hunting. I enjoyed myself once again. At least we, half the battle of turkey hunting is getting one to gobble. And if you can find one to gobble, that's, that's most of the fun right there, is hearing him gobble in the woods, hearing that echo through the woods. And that's, that's pretty good excitement, good way to wake up, the, wake up in the morning. Stay tuned. We have more turkey hunting on the Pendleton Sportsman when we get back. They came from every corner of the country. From small towns and big cities. 
but they all shared one thing in common. They belonged to a family called Marines. A tough and determined few dedicated to protecting everything we hold sacred. And still they come. Celebrate the history of those proud few who have earned the title Marine. Oh, you're lucky, young fella. Mm-hmm. You know, hospitals didn't even use ether for your procedure until about 1846. Yeah, slap on a few live leeches, grab a hacksaw, get to work. Of course, we don't use leeches anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to know history. Find curious facts from America's past at loc.gov, the Library of Congress website. Welcome back. So I guess you're wondering where that turkey disappeared to. Well, so am I. Well, it was that gobbler's lucky day, because I just couldn't catch up to him. Since I've been out here chasing these turkeys, I've seen a lot of other different things that I haven't seen before in the woods, like these big pine cones right here. You know, this thing is pretty massive. Probably weighs about like three or four pounds. And uh, it's pretty interesting. I've seen a lot of other things, little chipmunks, skunks, deer, you know, just all kinds of, of different things that, you know, I haven't seen before. And I think that's a cool point to, uh, to make or an interesting point to make that when you're out in the outdoors, just because you might be turkey hunting or deer hunting or whatever other outdoor activity you like to do, you know, come out here and just enjoy your time out here. I'm out here on a beautiful day. It's probably about 72, 73 degrees right now. I mean, it was picture perfect opening morning turkey hunting day. Of course, uh, it would have been more picture perfect if I had a picture of a, a turkey here instead of a pine cone. But, oh well, that's, that's, that's part of it. Who knows, maybe I'll get lucky on, on the way back to the truck. Maybe I'll hear one gobble. Still got, still got a few hours left, but take time while you're out here just to enjoy the outdoors. You know, look at things that you haven't seen before and notice some of the other things that you might not ever get to see again, like these big pine cones. I just wanted to take a second to show you some of the calls that I was using, and maybe you can try them next time you go turkey hunting. My favorite right here is a typical box call, and uh, it's pretty simple to use. You just slide this, slide this paddle back and forth across the, uh, the actual box. Makes it sound like this. There's your box call. Then I have a slate call. It has a peg. You scratch this surface up and it makes that friction. Sounds like a turkey. Another one I have here is another type of box call. It has a push button here. Now, I don't care if you're brand new to the game or if you've been around for a hundred years hunting turkeys. This has got to be an all-time favorite right here. Simple to use. It's real good when the, uh, the turkeys are in close and you just got to make those nice sweet sounds. Little purrs, little clucks, and the yelp. So, I highly recommend this for everybody. Um, something else you can do with this is you can get one or two of these, use one in each hand, have a mouth call in your mouth. Another fun one, and if uh, you have little kids and you want to give them something to do, get this little gobble call right here. All you got to do is shake it. There's your gobble. 
Now, it's a little tricky to use in public land when there's other hunters because you don't want them to think that you're a turkey and, and come over and shoot you. So be safe with that. And I have one more call right here, my little pouch. It was the mouth call I was using today. And I like to keep my mouth calls pretty basic. I'm not a pro. You can do whatever you want to. It's just my personal preference. I just have a, a two reed straight mouth call. And you push air through it. Like that. And so, with that turkey this morning, I was using everything to try to keep changing it up on him, give him a variety. And he, he seemed to like uh, the combination of two or three of them at the same time. And the reason why I was doing that is because I was competing with other hunters. I could hear the other hunters out there calling. And so I had to try, to try to do something different. And if I knew the terrain a little bit better, I think we could have gotten that turkey. But, oh well, that's hunting. Now I might not have gotten a turkey, but I bet you I can shoot some of these clay pigeons. Let's go check it out. Anybody wants to come down here and shoot, what do they got to do? First thing we do is the uh, sign-in procedure. We have got to know who we have on hand in case we have an emergency. It's real simple, sign in. We have the rank, the organization, time in, time out. We also keep track of the ammo that's been expended and the amount of rounds that the individual has shot. It takes about 30 seconds, then we can get the shooter on his way. If the shooter needs a uh, firearm, we have firearms available. We have 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 28, and 410. We also have the ammo. So you don't even have to bring your own gun or own ammo or anything. You can just get it all right here at this. The only thing we need is the body. We need the person to come up here and they're willing to shoot. <laughs> we can take care of you. 